Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today I just want to go over uh, blend layers, but just talk about the ones that I like to use the most and how I use them and what they do. I'm not going to walk through all of them because honestly, I don't really use all of them. I'm sure all of them can have some kind of good purpose and use case, but I'm just going to stick to the ones that I use and how I use them. I'm going to assume you already have a working knowledge of layers. Um, there's a lot of good tutorials out there already on how layers work, um, but this is just specifically going to focus on blending and with layers. So let's jump right into it. So to start off, let's look at screen. Now, screen is essentially the blend layer you want to use if you have the subject or the content that you care about um, that's bright on a dark background, and you want to be able to blend that in where the dark background disappears. So to demonstrate that, um, I have an image of a snowy scene, and let's say I wanted to add snowflakes, and I find an image of snowflakes on a black background. What I can do is copy this, come to this image, paste it as a new layer, and I did control L there, and move this and resize it so that it covers the whole scene. I'm not too worried about it lining up perfectly. And now if I go over here and say screen, now it all blends right in very nicely. All that black goes away, and if we zoom in on, say, one of these cactus like objects, and I turn it on and off, you can see that all the black is essentially gone and all the white parts uh, remain. And it was very simple. Uh, this works for things like fire or um, on a dark background or lights on a dark background. If you really wanna blend it in with little effort, screen is the way to go. Okay, so the next one I'm going to cover is the opposite of screen, and that's multiply. So multiply is when you have your subject or the part that you care about is dark and the background, for example, or whatever you want to eliminate is light. So uh, one example is like adding decals. Um, so I'm going to add, say, a decal like this one that's on a white background to this car. So I paste that in there. I'm going to resize it, changing to scale. Make this smaller, put it over by this door here, and change to shear to get the shape a little bit more like what I want it to be. Maybe bring that in a little bit more. Okay, close enough, you kind of get the idea. Now we can take this layer and put it as multiply, and then it blends right in. No selection, no needing to worry about feathering of edges. The blend layer takes care of everything, just uh, removing the light parts and keeping the darks. This also works for things like tattoos, or like I said, any situation where the part you want to keep is dark and the part you want to get rid of is light. One note on that, if you're finding that some of the uh, border or the white part is still showing up even after you use multiply, it's probably because it's not pure white and you can use contrast tools to kind of force it to be full 255 values. That way when you multiply, it completely goes away. So next let's talk about some blend layers that you can use to affect contrast. Uh, the three in particular are all next to each other. It's overlay hard light, and soft light. And the way these can be used to increase contrast is if you duplicate whatever your image is and then apply one of those blend layers. So in this case, I've made a copy of the original, change it to soft light, for example, and you can see there, dark parts got darker, light parts got lighter. Essentially, it's applying contrast. Hard light will produce a slightly stronger effect. Overlay does the same thing. I don't know that you can really tell the difference between overlay and hard light in this particular context, but essentially that's what these do. Now, uh, conversely, and we always talk about contrast as being able to increase but also decrease, if, for example, I make this duplicated layer negative, 
it in effect decreases contrast of the image. So if I turn it off, that's what it looks like. If I turn it back on, you can tell that there's a lot more gray than they're used to at the beginning. So these three blend layers can be used to increase or decrease contrast. Like any other tool, what's nice about it, or any other ability to apply contrast, you can adjust the intensity of its effect by changing the opacity of the layer. So the last one I'm going to cover is the difference blend layer, and it really does what you would expect it to based on its name. It, it basically calculates the difference between the two layers in terms of luminance and color. So uh, the quickest example I can show of a use case that I actually use and have used a little bit currently is, for example, if I were to take one of my chibi vector objects that I've drawn and um, taken another, say for example, a set of eyes. Uh, we'll use this one. And one thing you'll notice is I have an issue where the eyebrows disappeared from the image. Now, I've drawn both of these on the same layer, but if I move the eyes, for example, to a separate layer, Same problem still, black on black can't see it. However, if I make this layer negative and then apply difference, what I have is a situation where everything that is overlapping now for the black on black is turned into white and anywhere where there isn't overlap, it still remains black. And you can think of this mathematically as if white is 255 and black is zero and I do 255 minus 0, I'm still going to get 255, which means in the cases like this, I'm going to get white here. But in the cases where I'm doing white, which is 255 minus white, which is the background, I'm going to get 0. And that's why I end up getting black here. So it creates the nice automatic manga effect of doing the inversion of the color to maintain detail where there's overlap. The final example for di difference is essentially the, something that I use uh, as a part of experimentation. I don't know that most other people will find it that useful unless if they also do experimentation, but if I were to do a duplication of this image and say do something really subtle, um, something like I've talked about in the past doing sharpness, and I say sharpen more. And I look at it and I say, wow, I don't even know if that actually did anything. What I can do is do difference. And since it's supposed to be exactly the same, if there really was no effect, I should see that there is the entire image is completely black. But if I look, what I'll notice if I zoom in is that understanding that sharpness is really accutance and accutance is just increasing contrast at edges, what I can see by doing the difference is that these are all the areas that have been affected. and. In looking at the original image, it points to the places where there is the most defined edges on the image, that pretty much everywhere else, nothing else was affected. So difference can be used to help you determine what type of impact an effect has on an image. So that's it for this one. I just wanted to do a quick overview, uh, primarily because for future tutorials, there will probably be some blend layer effects involved. And instead of always explaining them in detail and what they do and why I did that, um, there'll be this video available to be able to reference or to point to. And really, I think blend layers are one of those things where once you understand what the blend layer does and you've done your own level of experiment with it, you'll just always know when are the situations when you want to use it or when you're compositing, what types of images can you start with to get the result you're looking for. All right. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you're interested in getting more of the content and updates, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.